I survived 200 days in the ultimate mod pack. All the mods 8 is filled with as many mods as possible. In these 200 days, I want to build powerful reactors, expand my industrial area, take over as many dimensions as possible, and prepare for the ATM star. Day 101, I still had so many items processing from the previous days and the mob farm was filled to the brim. So I cleared the entire grinder out and grabbed all the XP. During this time, the mod pack was also updated and that ender dragon quest was completed for me. With all these wild and horns and wings, I set up new drawers since these turn into leather and bone meal. That night, I grabbed tons of Inferium Essence and more all the Modium Ingots to make a hoe for the harvesting pylon. For the rest of the night, I cleared even more space for the mob farm chests. When it became morning, I turned as many Inferium Essences into a Supremium as possible. Then with that, I made a single Emerald Seed. This way, I could start getting the Emeralds automated. With all of that done, I went into the Mining Dimension to check on another quarry. And here, I only grabbed the Gold and the Inferium Essences. After that, I also set this thing to run all the way down to Bedrock. As soon as I came home, I started working on a diamond jetpack, so I made tons of these energy coils. After getting really deep into this, I realized I skipped a tier. I still needed a gold jetpack first. Day 103, that ended up not being super hard, and I got the two upgrades, and now this thing can hold up to 30 million FE. Powering this thing was a nightmare though, so I would need to upgrade my power generation next. In the meantime, I went into the mining dimension, since it had a full energy cube there, and I filled this jetpack up to 20 million FE. As soon as I came back, I grabbed all of the processed ingots and it still didn't even make a dent toward everything else that was left. For now, I think it was more efficient to just regularly smelt everything. Also, now that this jetpack was filled, I went to collect some vibranium. I only needed like one anyway so I could make the potions and grab tons more. This actually ended up taking a surprising amount of time. I fought a bunch of ghasts, raided a bastion, and then finally found two ores. The quest reward also gave me one extra. While I was here, I decided to dig through huge chunks of this area too but I had no luck. With just about three ores, I ran them through the processor and ended up with seven vibranium ingots. This actually ended up giving me more vibranium and the potion as a quest reward. My next goal was also to get this infinity range booster and eventually a dimension card. Later that day, I realized my lily pad of fertility could extend back one more row so I moved my farm back one block. Then I smelled some more ores in the furnace and the power draw was crazy so I had to upgrade the power really quick. I grabbed some compacting drawers and melons to start. The next day, I made some hopper botany pots to hopefully get a melon burning power source. With all the items gathered, I set this up right next to the wind generator area. I started off with the compacting drawers that had melons at the very bottom. So these botany pots would automatically grow melons and add on to this drawer. Now all of that would connect to this crusher, which crushes the melon slices into biofuel. Then the biofuel goes into the pressurized reaction chamber, but I actually had to clean up the rest of the area to construct this whole thing. I was actually having a pretty hard time setting up the pressurized reaction chamber. It took the whole night and it still wasn't even done. I also spent the whole next day setting up the electrolytic separator. Basically, I needed to get the oxygen pumped into the pressurized reaction chamber and that turns the biofuel into ethylene. Day 107 to day 108, I got the system to produce ethylene and some substrates. Now I have to plug in the gas burning generators, but of course I made some mistakes so I had to completely remake the system just a few blocks back back. This time I routed the power from underneath which made life so much easier. I also set a drawer up for the pressurized reaction chamber to collect the substrate. Things were a little wonky for now, but everything was working. I was then able to put a flux plug into the system which was generating some really good energy. Since the first gas burning generator was full, I decided to place another one. With all that being done, I placed some speed upgrades into the machines, mainly the pressurized reaction chamber. Also, all of my machines were now fully charged up, which meant we were fully operational. The best part of all of that was setting up the wireless charging. Now anything in my hotbar and my curious slots are going to be fully charged. That includes the jetpack and the crafting grid. I ended the night by putting some speed upgrades into the crusher and that just sped everything up. Plus I put a void upgrade into the substrate drawer. Now with all of that set up, I used the furnace one more time to smelt all the copper and it wasn't taking any power down. It was now way more efficient for me to just smelt these ores rather than process them all. I did this with basically all of the copper and then I realized I actually had ethylene left over. So I made some more space for two more gas burning generators. I think there were way too many generators 
generators now, but it was working, so I just kept it. I then maxed out the speed upgrades on these machines, and that also included the electrolytic separator as well. Day 110, I had a stack of netherite essence and some emerald essences. I was only able to make like four emeralds so far, but I did get like 60 blocks worth of inferium. Oh yeah, I also didn't realize that the ethylene only gets burned up when you need it, so all these extra gas burners ended up being uh, useless for now. Eventually, they all get used, trust me. After that, I moved the wireless controller into the house and only had a little bit of ores left. I let the gold go through the entire process cause those are a little bit more rare and then I cooked the iron manually since I had so many. With all that done, I rerouted all the uh, gas burning generators power into an energy cube and shrunk down to clean up the cables underneath the system. After that, a soul was trapped in the grave so I disenchanted my old boots. I actually ended up getting protection 3 on my helmet and with those new books, I could upgrade that to protection 4. To get ready for more storage, I smelt tons of nether quartz and made way more quartz enriched iron as well. Day 111 to 12, I hopped in the mining dimension to clear my chests in there. I got rid of the windmills and the other generators and set up the quarry with just flux plugs and some chests. At first it was working pretty well, but I realized uh, I would have to force load the chunks where my gas burners were at. Once all of that was done, this builder was at max power the entire time, running at super speed. This thing was actually working so well it almost finished before it turned into night. My next annoying task was smelting all the ores. This time I decided to just skip the process and do it all manually. That allowed me to get a bunch of XP as well. While I was doing all of that, I also went back and forth to the quarry and grabbed some all the modium. I also managed to send it all the way down to bedrock as well. After spending all day smelting, I got up to level 94 and this was the yield from all the stuff without even processing anything. My farm was also running and I had tons of new items. I decided now to make a row of netherite seeds and and turn all of my inferium all the way up to supremium. Once that was done, I grabbed my lily pad and moved it a block under my harvesting pylon to affect all the blocks above. Also, my pylon was set to 3x3, but I didn't notice. Then I broke down my obsidian furnace to upgrade it and it gave me tons more levels. I turned that furnace into a netherite furnace and had enough of all the modium ingots to make a all the modium furnace as well. Apparently, this smelts uh, a fourth of a stack at a time. Day 114 to day 115, I would need so much silicon. So I had to do a ritual to make silicon seeds. I I planted that one right in the corner. I also upgraded the farmland to Prudentium, just the first two row for now. Once again, I moved the wireless controller back so I didn't have to force load way too many chunks. After that, I put a netherite ingot to use and upgraded my backpack. I also made tons of enriched carbon, redstone, and diamonds to fill up the metallurgic infusers. Once that was done, I grabbed a bunch of sand for glass and began working my way up the storage parts. Oh yeah, then I finally fixed the harvesting pylon as well. Since I was already out, I also made a bunch of upgrades for the mob masher. After that, I realized I could use those hearts to make better heart canisters. I started the mob grinder back up so that I could get tons of string too. So to help with any overflow, I also set up another chest as well. Once that was done, I realized I had more than enough for an emerald jetpack and upgraded to this one as well. That night, I made mortar and pestles and crushed up some ender pearls to make calcinated vibranium powder. With that, I had some more vibranium sight potions. Inside the nether, I grabbed my nature's compass and for some reason, that gave me the ward and quest reward as well. Once I collected those rewards, I went straight for a warped forest and drank the potion. With this, the ores were highlighted and I got five ores from the first one I mined. I got another five and found a nice area with a bunch of vibranium too. I came home with around 28 ores. I ran these things through the processor and got like five blocks plus 11, which equaled up to like 56 vibranium ingots. Now that I had tons of power, I wanted to make a gigantic quarry. I decided to make this quarry about four whole chunks and set it loose. I did very little on day 117, but here's the recap. These were the four chunks that were mined out. I grabbed all the aldermodium ores in here and I ran them through the processor already. This was the yield from the quarry though, thousands of ores. Inside of the processor chest, I had three one-time compressed blocks of all the modium and three regular blocks. That ended up being like 30 blocks of all the modium ingots. To bring all the quarry stuff back, I had to make a tier three stack upgrade for the backpack. This is what the backpack looked like after I collected everything. The rest of the night, I smelt up all the ores and I realized I could just smelt uh, the blocks of some of the ores as well. Since the furnace was so fast, I processed the ancient debris and cooked the rest super quickly. These were all the items after the compression. Then to end these days, I made the rest of the Aldemodium tools for their quest rewards. I even made the Aldemodium carrot and apple as well. Day 119, I looked at the recipe for the infinity range booster and the dimensional card. Both of them were pretty expensive 
expensive. I also didn't realize that the recipe for these uh, endurium ingots could use ender pearls as well, so I did it in the most complicated way. At first, I did the right thing by going to the end dimension and looking for the end highlands biome. This is where you can find unobtainium. I looked around the edges of the island to see if I could find any exposed ores. I ended up finding a mineshaft instead, and there was nothing too good in here, just these chorus fruit. While exploring some more, I found this little dungeon area, and while fighting these endermites, my mythic affix activated and it gave me like a loot pinata drop. The drops from these guys were only some uh, weird apotheosis gems. The end also spawns tons of mythic mobs, so I wanted to take out some for the gear. This phantom though was so annoying and it didn't drop anything. On the bright side, I found a ship and made my way towards it. The first thing I did here was break those phantom spawners and then I made my way inside. These guys weren't too hard at all. Also the loot in here was pretty nice. I got tons of really cool armor and a bunch of random ingots. I made sure to pick up a bunch of spawners while I was here as well. As I got deeper into the ship, I did the same few things. I just took out a bunch of wither skeleton, looted all the chests and grabbed a bunch of spawners. Turns out I spent the whole day there, which was well worth it. And uh, as I was right about to give up, I saw some purple ores that I'd never seen before. This was unobtainium. So I built a safe area around it and got two ores plus more from the quest reward. Right across from the island, I saw even more. So I totaled up to 10 ores now. Before teleporting back home, I actually grabbed two more and then ran them all through the processor. I ended up with 37 unobtainium ingots. Rest of the night, I salvaged all the gear for the mythical materials and of course the regular materials as well. Then I all the gems I had. I ended up getting a pretty cool mythical affix on my chest plate. Day 121, I made a structure compass, but I had no clue you were supposed to shift click. It actually took me forever to learn about that. In the meantime, I made these inferior growth accelerators and placed some of them below my crops. Remember how you could use those ender pearls for endurium ingots? Well, I actually started out by making this rubber so that I could craft a machine called a macerator just to get the ender dust. So I ended up getting the machine, but for some reason it wasn't taking any power from my flux point. Instead, I just used this single use battery to grab some ender dust. With all of that, I was able to make endurium ingots finally. That then allowed me to make an infinity range booster. So this card actually doesn't work on advanced wireless transmitters, I think. So I had to go back to the regular one, which showed that everything was fully working. Then the dimensional card actually needed three of these infinity cards as well. I started the next morning by making potions of regenerations for hell shelves and eventually an enchantment library. Once that was done, I went out to explore another dimension to get blaze rods, but I stumbled into an ancient pyramid. Now this structure had so many mobs, but the loot in here was absolutely incredible. Every single second here, I thought my computer was going to explode from all the mobs. It was 100% all worth it because of the mythical armors and ingots I got in here. Plus, with all of my attack speed gems, I was able to just spam attack with my sword, which cleared out huge areas. I ended up flying around to the top to get to the main loot room here. This is where I got surrounded by mobs, and while killing them, I got some of those loot pinata things to activate. My backpack here was filled with all the loot I collected from in here. The best things I collected were these piglet hearts which come from the bosses that spawn here. I actually fought a few more of those dudes, but I still only ended up with those two hearts for now. Plus, all the witches decided to spawn on me, so I just had to leave. This was actually so much loot, I had an inventory filled with enchanted books. I also had so many armors to salvage, I got like 25 mythic parts. With all those parts, I put mythic affixes on all of my gear. I was looking for health, luck, and speed upgrades. Plus, now my loot pinata affix is doubled with this new affix on my sword. I also changed changed on my pickaxe as well. Day 124, I made this energizing orb so that I could try and get different all the modium alloys. But to set that up, you need like an incredible amount of power. So I'd have to do that much later. I then went into the nether and traveled for a while since I couldn't find my previous fortresses. This was all just so that I could get tons of nether bricks. With that, I made four hell shells and needed to upgrade my enchantment setup to infuse these bad boys. Just to kill two birds with one stone, I actually wanted the end shells too, so I used a lot of my gas tears to make end crystals. Before I hopped into the portal, I disenchanted a sword and got looting two on my all the modium sword, plus I grabbed an extra 29 bottles just in case. Now I was ready to re-summon the dragon. I was mainly focused on grabbing tons of dragon's breath while I was here. The only problem is that you end up picking up this ender air stuff when you uh, spam. 
While waiting for the breath to come out, I ended up breaking all the crystals and then the dragon perched and in like four hits, I was able to take down a quarter of its health. I ended up grabbing 18 bottles of dragon breath and then took this dude out really easily. I picked up the dragon scales and some loot. Then I just hopped back out. Also, I realized that the dragon left another dragon egg there as I was leaving. Now I made four end shelves to enchant those hell shelves. And then I also enchanted my pickaxe as well, which got efficiency four plus fortune four. More importantly, I got that enchantment library and accidentally vein mined my whole house while placing it down. Day 125, I placed all of my books into the library and filtered out the ones that would be good for my sword. With all of that, I was able to make a god sword. I was just missing max sharpness. I wanted to make this dimension card as well, so I grabbed all of my soul sand and wither skeleton heads and went to the tunnel that I had dug out. In here, I cleared out an area to fight the wither. This was my first one, I think. Uh, the fight ended up being so quick, it actually took me longer to just set the wither up. The next day, I almost destroyed my house again, trying to fix the bookshelves. And uh, once I fixed that, I disenchanted my old chest plate and made some more end shelves. To max this place out, I would actually need two draconic end shelves. After all of that, I dug underneath the farm to place two layers of inferior growth accelerators. It wasn't too expensive and it should be a huge boost. That ended up taking the whole night and the next morning, I put speed upgrades for the metallurgic infuser. I then plugged in two more gas burning generators, but at this point, I don't think those do anything, even though it still took in the ethylene. With that being done, I got some more ender dust and that allowed me to make even more endurium ingots. With all of that, I made two more infinity range upgrades. Day 128 to day 129, to finish things off, I had to grab some more sand. And with that, I had four infinity range boosters, so I very quickly destroyed a wither and boom, I got the dimensional card. A reminder for anyone watching, you don't actually need the infinity range card anymore. I just kept it because I had no clue. To test this card out, I went to the end dimension and now I could access my storage system from anywhere. While I was here, I went out to look for end cities to hopefully get some dragon heads. I ended up finding my end city here. The only things that were good were these armor pieces. There was no ship here either, so I just moved on. I ended up following this map I found in that first end city and found a gigantic structure. I would have to explore that much later. Turns out there was an end city right behind it. And this place had a dragon head, which allowed me to make one draconic end shelf. I actually forgot to grab the elytra in here and just came home. After that, I placed the draconic end shelf down and made these melon shelves, which actually increased the arcana. Once that was done, I harvested my farm, uh, which now gave me way more netherite. And I was able to make a supremium farmland as well, which progressed to the quest line. That night, I ended up with a stack of netherite ingots. The next morning, I made another four trunk quarry and went back to the end. I realized that I missed the elytra wings. Once I got that, I was one step away from completing the main quest. This angel ring thing was super expensive though. I then checked back in the quarry and it was already two chunks deep. So I grabbed the Aldamodium ores in here and smelt them down really quickly. I also realized that uh, once the stuff is done cooking, all I have to do is just break the furnace to grab all the levels. Day 131, I made these night vision potions so that I could get the shelf of sight, which would uh, show me more enchantments. After that, I looked at these experience seeds, which needed these things called experience capsules. While working on that, I also made this fluid grid and some 64 k fluid storage parts for the quest rewards. I ended up getting the 1 million fluid storage part two. This meant that I could store fluids into the storage system, but for now, it seemed pretty useless to me. I also finally set the priorities right on the drawers and then put some lava and water into the storage system. Before the night ended, I went to the nether to grab a bunch of soul stone. With these soul stones, I could finally make soul dust, which made these experience capsules. So to fill these four, I actually stood on that XP tank to collect my levels and then ran the tap to get those levels back and into the capsules instead. That actually worked pretty well, but I realized that I could just get all the XP from a furnace. So I went to the quarry to get all that down to bedrock and then grabbed everything that was in the chests. After that, I just smelt everything. Some of these things had to be turned into ores. Others could just be smelt as blocks. Once a good batch was done, I broke the furnace and filled two and a half capsules. The next round ended up filling the rest of the capsules. I then made some Imperium Essence and did the ritual for the experience seeds. I planted it on the corner. Then with all these fertilized essence things, I ended up just growing a bunch of them and got an extra seed as well. For now, I could only make like 15 droplets, but trust me, they start to stack up. Next order of business was more drawers. 
The first one was for silicon, since I was getting so many from the farm. I then moved the leather and bone meal one too, so that it would look nicer. Day 133, I had the mob grinder run the entire time, so I shut that thing down and grabbed the XP. I had like hundreds of more leather and bone meal now. Plus with the farm, I got three insanium essences. Then I was running out of storage in some drawers, so I upgraded them with gold upgrades. At the same time, my quarry just finished and I had even more things coming into the system. I also needed another drawer and this one was for arrows. That night my storage system was acting pretty funky, so I got rid of the furnace and the fluid grids for now. I also reverted the uh, setup back to the original. Turns out the issue right now was just the infinity range booster which I got rid of. Once morning hit, I smelt more of the ores I got from the quarry and this was all the stuff after it was cooked and compressed. The rest of the day I spent making a super wireless grid. This required all the other grids plus a super advanced processor, it was pretty expensive. It held way more power but it was just way less convenient. Since my crafting grid now always remained charged, this whole thing was just useless. On the bright side, I was able to make this green heart canister. I had all the materials except for the nether star, which was super easy to get by smoking this wither. I put the green heart canister next to the amulet and had even more hearts now. Day 135 to day 136, I found out there's wither proof tinted glass. So I made tons of it and created an area in the mine tunnel to kill withers in. I don't think the area needed to be this big, but anyway, I summoned the wither inside of it and the explosions managed to do nothing. In total, I managed to take out 8 withers, which left me with 2 skulls and 8 nether stars. With those nether stars, I could now craft a blue heart container. This filled up my amulet, but I didn't know that you could have up to 10 of each canister into the amulet. Then to complete some more quests, I made a netherite chest. Once that was done, I started making 2x2 drawers, which seemed to be a much more efficient way of storing things. I put sugarcane, arrows, bone meal, and leather into one of these. Once that was done, I made a 1x2 for inferior essence and silicon. I then harvested my farm which gave me more experience and I filled the last two slots with the compacting drawers. These ones were for gold and iron since I would always need them in so many forms. After some more restructuring, I fit another 2x2 two two drawer and this one was for string, sugar, bone meal and ender pearls. Eventually I would need to move my entire storage area. Since I had been collecting tons of inferium, I now had 4 insanium essences. With that and some dragon scales, I could make these dragon egg seeds. This was all so that I wouldn't have to go hunting for more dragon heads. I planted this seed and it turns out it needs to be on a dragon egg crux, which was just as expensive. In the meantime, I made these ethereal glass to put in the mob grinder. This was supposed to be solid to the mobs, but not to the players, but I think this one gave light to the mob grinder, so I scratched that for now. Instead, I made another 2x2 drawer and this one was for carrots, rotten flesh, slime balls, and spider eyes. Then I got another insanium. Two more to go. The next morning, I set up an ender chest right above the harvesting pylon. Since I still wanted to save storage, I needed to filter items from my chest into it. I also used these ender pearls to increase the storage. Right now, I couldn't get these importers to work, so I would just have to wait for items to fill up and another ender chest and then place them manually in the storage system. Next, I put another pouch upgrade into the tool belt since I had this new create wrench. After all of that, I made a diamond pipe upgrade which allowed me to whitelist all of the essences. This meant I no longer had to worry about all the seeds coming into the ender chest. Before that night, I placed a diamond pipe upgrade around every other pipe as well and also found out that you could make tinted ethereal glass which I put down in front of the mob grinder. Day 139, I figured out that you could use a creative importer to bring items from the ender chest in. So while working on that, I only got up to like the ultra importer. I ended up trying to use this one, but the way my storage system was set up kind of made it impossible. For now, I still had to do it manually. Then to complete some more quests, I made a storage monitor, network receiver, and a network transmitter. So if I want to build something far away, now I could just use those last two to connect to the main system. Day 140, it was now time to upgrade all of my ore processing machines. The first one I upgraded was the purifying chamber, which now had three import slots. Uh, I then went down the line and upgraded the crushing factory and the enrichment chamber as well, which now also all had three import slots. Once that was finished, I got another insanium essence. One more to go. After that, I realized how much stuff I already had. I was able to upgrade the machines to the advanced version, which now had five import slots. Then to put all that to work, I set up another four chunk quarry, and in no time, I had tons of items. This was all just to see how effective these machines were now. I had to turn on auto split for every machine. Uh, which basically made the process pretty quick now. 
This was about 64 blocks of raw iron being processed. My limiting factor now was actually the electrolytic separator, so I had to put gas upgrades into this purification chamber. Day 141, I went back to the mining dimension to grab the inferium in the chests and all the all the modium that was left over. After that, I took my metallurgic infusers and gave these guys some upgrades. They were all basic levels now, which meant like three slots for the input. It also needed like way more of the enriched stuff. So I put tons of redstone, coal, and diamonds into the enrichment factory to fill these infusers up. Turns out the osmium compressor could also be upgraded too. So I did that just in case. For some more advanced mechanism stuff, I would also need another infuser filled with refined obsidian. So I placed another one of those things down too. This one was filled with enriched refined obsidian. Using that, I could turn reinforced alloy into atomic alloys. All of that allowed me to upgrade the energy cube to the ultimate version, which now held tons more power. To end that night off, I cooked all the blocks of copper I had and once again I broke the furnace and I gained like 44 levels. With those levels, I infused two hell shelves and made one shelf of sight. This showed me another row of enchantments. Day 142, I ran the quarry one more time down to bedrock and this gave me even more infernium essence. After that, I made a melon shelf and had enough insanium to make the dragon egg crux. I placed that right underneath the seed and uh, over the growth accelerator. It took a bit to grow, but now I knew it was fully operational. Next up, I placed the last melon shelf in the corner. While waiting for those dragon egg seeds to grow, I grabbed more of the items that were dug up from the quarry. And once again, I cooked the copper manually, which ended up giving me even more levels. The rest of the items, I ran through the processor and since they were upgraded, it was moving so much faster. The next morning, I completed some quests to start the day and I wanted to craft this experience crystal eventually. As I was waiting for things to smelt, I got tons more alloys and maxed out the speed upgrades for these machines. Once that was done, I started getting these dragon egg essences. So to make some of these dragon heads, I also have to craft these uh, blank skulls. <laughs> After that, I learned I could make elite level machines. So I started making a ton of reinforced alloys and these elite control circuits. I let this set of items cook and then went down to the mine to grab tons of andesite. With all of that, I made 32 andesite alloy to complete some create quests as well. The next day, I upgraded the purifying chamber first and went down the line. Each machine had seven inputs now. Even with all the speed, the sheer number of items I had just took super long to process. Next up, I grabbed more amethyst shards and tons of obsidian. I then came home to turn all these essences into their main forms. At this point, I basically just had infinite nether right now. Once all of that was done, I rolled my enchants until I got some sick ones on my chest plate. It wasn't protection, but like vitality 5, which increased my hearts like crazy. I wanted more enchants, so I manually cooked some more ores and got 19 more levels. Then finally, I was able to make the dragon head, and uh, this made sure that I could max out these enchants eventually. Before the night ended, I rolled more enchants and disenchanted these boots. Day 145 to day 146, now it was time for huge upgrades. I didn't want to force load too many chunks, but I had to expand my industrial areas really quick. I started off by smelting tons of stone, then I dug this entire area back towards the chunk border. Once that was done, I cleared the area and placed down oak slabs on the ceiling. Then with all this new space, I replaced the two side walls with stone bricks and cracked stone bricks. Next up were the floors, which I ripped up and replaced with deep slate bricks. I made sure to throw some cracked deep slate bricks in there as well. So now I wanted to move the machines too, but I was waiting for some of the processes to finish. And as soon as it finished, I grabbed everything from the chest and ripped the system apart. I moved it all to the left side of the cave. The setup was really easy and it was all powered from the back with a flux point. Once that was finished, I made a much nicer area for the metallurgic infusers as well. Then came the star of the show, the storage system. I put the controller right in the center in front of a flux point. Of course, I set up the full system here. Once that was done, I used some of the side walls to house the drawers. The right side was filled with compacting drawers and the left side was for all the oak ones. That side ended up taking a lot longer since I had to mess with the botany pots. Eventually, it was all set up and linked to a controller. Next morning, I got the bad omen effect and spread that to a village. Then my ender chest was packed with stuff. After all of that, I also made these uh, simple compacting drawers for items like lapis, redstone, and all the netherite I had. I also placed these gold upgrades into those drawers as well. Finally, after all of that, I set up two 2x2 two two drawers, which would store all of the items from the farm. I filled those drawers with everything coming out of the ender chest and then piped the items from the ender chest into the controller. This way, I wouldn't have to manually bring items in and out. With that being done, I could fill out the back walls now. Day 148, to improve the storage system, I went out to grab tons of sand and some cactus, just in case. With all this glass, I made some patterns to craft a pattern grid. 
it was now time to set up auto crafting. I placed this thing right underneath the controller. The next machines I needed were the crafting monitor and of course the crafter itself. These things were kind of expensive but well worth it. I actually decided to upgrade the crafter first before even placing it down. I got the iron one, then the gold one and worked up to a netherite crafter. With this setup, I started making pattern recipes. First up was for processor bindings and next I made all the different types of processors. Most importantly though, I wanted the pattern grids to have as many storage part recipes as possible so I could hopefully work my way up to an infinite storage. I had all the way up to 100 million storage part recipes for now. Now, when I hold control shift and left click, I can craft directly from the grid. I got 10 1k storage parts in no time and slowly started working my way up. While doing that, I made even more recipes and another compacting drawer for diamonds. Day 149, my farm was producing tons of items so I had to turn a lot of them into their main versions. I also learned that you could shift click the uh, experience droplets, which was very convenient. I then needed tons more sand and while I was looking for some, I grabbed a zeal lighter from this gatekeeper and the blue book. I also grabbed these lunar stone bricks as well. Once that was done, I collected about eight stacks of sand. All of that was used for glass and to make some more storage parts. It took way too long, but all of that finally allowed me to make a 256k storage part. I actually wanted more of an upgrade though, so I made a few stacks of processors to hopefully get another tier up. That however required even more sand, so I had to go back to the desert to start excavating some more. Finally, I got two more 256k storage parts, and I could now make the 1 million storage part. This thing needed advanced housing. Also, I didn't know about the disc manipulator just yet. Oh yeah, I also got two more Insanium Essences as well. Day 150, I enchanted my leggings again and got Protection 5 on it. Then with those Dragon Egg Essences, I could make two more Draconic End Shelves and with those two, I had Eterna maxed, meaning my enchants go up to level 100 now. Next up, I started working on these Ars Nouveau quests. First up, I made a Novice Spell Book, then I already had a bunch of these Magical Wood. After that, I made a Scribes Table and put that in my house. With this, I could start crafting some spells. Really quickly, I upgraded my spell book and started working on the most important part of this mod, the enchanting and combining. In the beginning, I started with an imbuement chamber, which turned lapis into source gems. I ended the night by making two source jars and trying to fill those things up. Day 151 to day 152, I moved those imbuement chambers into my house for now and made some spells. After that was finished, I made some more arcane pedestals. This ended up finishing some quests and now I could start working on the enchanting apparatus. I also found out how to fill the source jars. Since I had this auto farm running, I made an agronomic source link, which would uh, get the source from the growth of the plants and put it into the jars. With that done, I chopped down tons of Ars Nouveau trees to make even more source jars. So in order to make uh, all the modium alloy, you actually need an enchanting apparatus with tons of source. It actually took me a bit to set this uh, whole apparatus up. Once it was set up though, I used gold blocks and the source blocks to make an enchanter shield. During the night, I used fertilized essence to grab tons more stuff. This way, I got another insanium essence. After that, I made some gold upgrades to place into the drawers for more storage. Then I finally learned about the disc manipulators, which can take all the items from one disc and place it to another. I did this so I could get all of my smaller storage parts back. The next day, I was able to upgrade to an elite disc manipulator and started clearing out all of my older disc drives. This is when I messed up real bad. I completely forgot to record two whole days of progress. And these days, I ended up doing some pretty big things. First off, I got all of my items into one disk drive. Then, more importantly, I used like seven stacks of steel and a bunch of copper to make these thermal evaporation blocks, valves, and controllers. This was so I could make these huge thermal evaporation plants. This machine was super simple and I was able to build it to max size. That means it was 18 blocks high with 15 blocks being underground. The four advanced solar generators on the corner heat up the liquid inside. The first plant on the left actually grabs water from the sink and turns it into brine. It's the main plant. Then, with these mechanical pipes, the brine gets put into two different areas. First and more importantly is to this uh, electric separator and the chemical infuser. This ends up turning the brine into chlorine and that being mixed with hydrogen makes hydrogen chloride. HCl is what I actually really need. The rest of the brine ends up going to another tank which is also max size, and that turns into lithium. That's for much later. So in order to get this HCL down to my ore processors, I needed to make a thing called the quantum entangler porter. For this, I had to make some atomic alloy. I made two, and I placed one underneath this chemical injection chamber, which was a new machine. 
I placed the other one underneath a chemical infuser and set the name as HCL. Plus I had to figure out how the uh, inputs worked, which took me a little bit of time. Once the input was set up, I had to fix the output down below. Now I was finally at a tier three ore processing factory. Finally, my gas burning generators were actually being used since this process needed 55,000 FE per tick. In the meantime, I decided to upgrade this chemical injection chamber to the elite version as well. To test this thing out, I grabbed 66 copper ore and ran them through the machines. While that was happening, I decked this thing out with speed and energy upgrades. Those 66 ores almost became three stacks. Before these days ended, I upgraded those infusers to advanced versions as well. My next order of business was using the other thermal plant as well. This would have to be for lithium dust. The lithium would go to a machine called a rotary condensator. Oh yeah, sometimes the water dries up on the other plant because I have the sink connected to like two different machines. It's not too big of a deal though, since you actually don't need these machines running at all times. Back to the lithium though, the condensator turns liquid lithium into regular lithium and after that I need another machine called the chemical crystallizer which turns the lithium into lithium dust. All of that I had output to a netherite chest. These machines absolutely drained energy and uh, I actually had to label some flux points to see which was which. If you're wondering what lithium dusts are for, it's for induction cells, which are massive energy cubes, mainly for huge reactors. Also, there's a tier four ore processing factory, but that's not worth it in my opinion. The next thing I did was make tons of energy tablets and uh, machine casings. This was to make a bunch of energy cubes, which is needed to make these induction cells. The basic one was already like 300 times bigger than an ultimate energy cube. Day 157, these recipes were super expensive. It takes four of the previous tier to upgrade the cell and the provider, which means more energy cubes and energy tablets as well. I was able to get the advanced induction cell, which had like 25 giga FE, I think it was giga. Then I was able to make the provider as well. At least the lithium dust were being pumped out like crazy. I took a break real quick to make these two insanium essences and went right back to crafting these elite cells. That's probably gonna have to be the max for me since uh, it already took so many amount of materials to craft. Of course, I had to make tons more basic induction cells and providers to craft four advanced induction stuff just to upgrade to the elite version. I had to repeat this process one more time for the provider as well. And now it was time to house these things. For that, I made some induction casings, structural glass, and induction ports. The setup was actually pretty easy. It was three by three floors, four block high with some glass and ports. The center was the induction provider with the induction cell on top. The particles came out, which meant it was all good and all I had to do was just set up the inputs and outputs now. Once it became morning, I noticed my generators were pulling 100,000 FE per tick. Regardless, I set up a flux point in the induction matrix and it was barely charging. This thing could hold so much energy, it was really crazy to see. Once again, the setup was temporary because this was meant for huge mechanism machines. For the first time, I actually noticed all of the gas burning generators being used. Then I grabbed all the items from the farm, got up to level 100, and enchanted my shield, which was really nice now. Later on, I ended up getting some bad news. My power was basically all drained. I had to set a limit for the matrix, grab all of my lithium, and shut off some machines for now. This made sure my generators were back up. Rest of the night, I actually messed up trying to upgrade this uh, gas burning generator, so I had to remake the whole thing again. Day 160, the new setup was pretty similar. I just used these universal pipes instead with an ultimate pipe upgrade in each one. Plus, I also got rid of a few useless generators and just kept four. With that, I set up the flux point again and everything was running pretty well. Turns out I could even set up another gas burning generator. Now this matrix was pulling 10,000 FE per tick passively. Then to reduce even more lag, I removed some hopper botany pots. This ended up clearing so much space for more drawers. Once that was done, I went underneath my farm to place another layer of growth accelerators. Then I started on a pretty major grind. It was time to start getting energizing rods and the energizer set up. With these, I could make some cool reactors and eventually all the modium alloys. In order to really speed this process up, I needed a way to get blaze rods quickly. So I made some solium daggers to craft a soul extractor. I ended up needing some soul jars too. So I went to the nether to grab a bunch of soul stone. Turns out that soul extractor thing was just a waste of time. I ended up just making another solium dagger and went to the other dimension. Over here, I went on a blaze killing spree and slowly filled up these jars. Once I got the four jars, I grabbed some Imperium and did the ritual to get blaze seeds. 
I planted that stuff right away and used a bunch of my fertilizers. The yield from these things were actually pretty nice. Now I was able to start working on these energizing rods. I started with just a starter tier for now. The energizing ore was right in the center of my factory with three rods facing it. The rods were powered by a flux point. Before testing it out fully, I upgraded the rods to basic tier. For the next tier, I put golden iron into the orb, which made energized steel. I really wish I knew that I could use blocks for these, but I just grinded it out the old fashioned way. I even started on a reactor as well. I had 20 starter reactor blocks and I tried to place them, but it turns out I needed 16 more blocks. So with the starter reactor set up, I moved on to the basic one. Then it was time for the hardened one, which used energized steel. For now, I don't think there was a way to really fast track this process. So it was uh, moving pretty slow. I had to make the items manually and then craft the new reactor pieces. I even ended up running out of clay, but I did get the hardened reactor done. Next up was a blazing one. And this is where I was really glad I had the blaze rods. The next morning, I also got a uh, hardened energizing rods too. Then I used a ton of blaze rods to get blazing crystals. Once again, I wish I really knew about the blocks. Regardless, this process was actually pretty quick and I got a blazing reactor. Next tier was called Niotic. And before moving on to that, I wanted to upgrade the rods. I could only upgrade one rod and I decided to just move on to the reactor. This one needed diamonds. And once again, I really didn't try the blocks. This reactor though could generate 25,000 FE per tick. So it would be a pretty great addition. I ended up using almost two stacks of diamonds and then just decided to make these uh, niotic crystal seeds because I wanted more than one reactor eventually. I was close to the upgrades, so I harvested the niotic crystals and the blaze essences. Then uh, I made these blaze crystal seeds as well, just in case. With all of that, I could now upgrade the rods. I spent the rest of the day energizing diamonds and got all of the blocks done. The next tier was spirited and this one could generate 100k FE per tick. This tier though took emeralds and a million FE to energize. I ended up doing the ritual for the seeds as well. Day 165 to day 167, I had some Supremium Essence, which I used on the farmland for some of these crystals. After that, I made some more reactor blocks. And then I had these tertium growth accelerators for like two blocks. With all the energizing, I was finally able to get a spirited nitro reactor. Around here, I learned that I could use blocks now. So I was able to upgrade my rods to niotic and then spirit it after. Once all of that was done, I placed this reactor down to see how it would work. The blocks ended up building themselves and it was really cool. I also checked the final tier of this thing and it could generate like 250,000 FE per tick, but it requires nether stars. In the meantime, I put a uh, uraninite into the reactor, which started the whole thing up. It also took water as a one-time coolant and the other sides took coal and redstone. I put blocks of coal and redstone for now, but later on, I just switched to the regular versions because uh, they're way more efficient. In order to really push this thing, it needs ice. So I went out to look for some colder biomes. Lucky for me, there was a little area uh, away from my base, which had some snow and I could compress them using a compressor to make ice. I also used a basic generator to power this thing and it was working. I got four ice and did a ritual for ice seeds. With ice essences, you can make packed ice, which works even better for the reactor. I made sure to set up a flux network on the reactor as well. And to test it out, I made the induction matrix use its energy and everything was running really nicely. For now, I set this thing up right in front of the thermal evaporation plant, but I would need to find a better place later. After that, I set up an auto craft for packed ice and made some exporters and importers. Day 168, I found the perfect place to house the reactor uh, that has the ability to expand as well. I started off by clearing these chests and using all of these cool mob drops for more items. Once that was done, I cleared the XP tank, chests, and the absorption hopper. Then I got rid of the glass, the mob masher, and just everything else. Once all of that was done, this area had the perfect amount of space to place the reactor in. I filled that thing up and placed a flux plug in. Then it was time to automate it. First up, I needed to make some more compacting drawers. One was for coal and the other one was for uh, uraninite. With that done, I placed an exporter on the back of the reactor and ran a cable all the way through the walls to my storage system. I also shrunk down too, but now I was able to create a whitelist for the exporter. I wanted it to pull in coal, redstone, uraninite, and any type of ice in the system. It all ended up working very well. And then I used some stone to start uh, closing some of the holes behind all the machines. 
with all that done, I placed a urinanite into the drawer and wanted to make some garden cloches next. Before the day ended, I also made some seeds. The next morning, I set up more source jars and set up the enchanting apparatus for all the modium alloy tools. Once that was done, I decorated the reactor area floors, placed tinted ethereal glasses in the center and tinted glasses around the rest of the area. Then to make these garden cloches, I made an engineer's blueprint for the workbench. With this, I made nine incandescent light bulbs and now I had to find out how to get treated wood. Also, I ended up getting like three giga FE into the induction matrix. I decided to make the rest of my machines get power from the reactor as well. Once that was done, I made a pyrolyzer, powered that with an energy cube and made a fluid encapsulator to get oil into a bucket. It took a little bit, but I got the inputs and outputs set up as well. Day 170, I finally got enough oil to fill the buckets and made the treated wood. With that, I made three garden cloches. I cleared an area next to my farm to place these things. It needed water, which I got from the sink. Uh, then it needed power. For that, I used a flux point and some cables on top. Once that was done, I set up uh, blazing crystal seeds with a uh, tier four farmland in one cloche. I actually ended up reversing the setup later that night. I moved the sink to the back and uh, this way the front would connect to an ender chest, which would grab any crop that was full grown. At this point, I also had tons of netherite, so I used uh, ultimate pipe upgrades as well. Inside another cloche, I set up the uraninite seeds. I didn't know what to do with the third one just yet. Day 171 to day 172, I now force loaded the farm chunks and realized I had four insanium essences so now i could also make a nether star seeds i did the ritual for the seeds and realized i would need a nether star crux which was just as expensive as the seeds in the meantime i learned how to use a structure compass and search for an ancient city this location was 3500 blocks away and along the way i found this cool flower pyramid this place was filled with creepers and i also kept a lot of the flowers here as well just for dyes after that, I found another structure and this place had the Everdon portal blocks. Then finally, I got close to the ancient city and started digging down. I picked up tons of stone, coal, and a bunch of random other ores too. I kept doing that until I stumbled into some skulk blocks. One layer underneath from that, I got what I wanted, the ancient city. In here, I was looking for echo shards. This place was pretty big and I already summoned a warden, I'm pretty sure. I started looting this chest in here and I also got some spawners here as well. Since I wasn't crossed through anything, I ended up fighting a warden and I tore that thing apart. Then finally, I got an echo shard and basically just rinsed and repeated that process. I did do something cool though. I used one of these uh, warden hearts to activate this giant portal. I quickly hopped in and realized I would need warden armor to get some good visibility. I had to come back and once I did, I tore through this entire place breaking as many skulk blocks as possible. After that, I got about 16 echo shards and I came home. So with those shards, I could make reinforced echo shards and those could turn netherite armor into warden armor. I was able to get some good enchants on these, especially the helmet and the chest plates. I had to manually put enchants on the leggings. Then it was time for the mythical affixes. I actually ended up getting really good one for the leggings. Once that was finished, I ran some ores through the processor and got tons in return. Then I planned on automating the furnace as well. First up, I put an importer on the side to pull any items in. Once that was done, I had a crafter face the furnace from above. After that, I connected everything towards the main system and it should be operational. I now just needed to put the smelted recipes into the furnaces crafter uh, like these processors and it would automatically just make and smelt these items. I actually tried it out by making 10 super advanced processors and it was working really well. Day 174, I was able to make one more Insanium Essence and I used that to make Insanium Farmland. That ended up being a big mistake since I actually needed the Insanium for Nether Star Cruxes. Then with all this power, I wanted to make some huge quarries with Silk Touch instead of Fortune. First, I set up the coordinates and then I made a clearing silk quarry card. I had to remake the area again and I chose to make this quarry four chunks wide. This thing was working very well. While that was going on, I decided to use some ethereal glasses to trap a mob. Day 175 to day 176, that little ethereal glass trap was for pigliches. Before I even tried to trap that thing, I needed some Drigme charms. 
In order to get those, I would need to find a Drigby first. Lucky for me, I had one Drigby shard in the storage system, but I personally wanted a few extra. It literally took me all day and I couldn't see a single one of these Drigmies. When I came back home, I realized the Warden armor actually took a lot of damage, so I switched back to the All the Modium set. After that, I set up the enchanting apparatus for the Drigmy charm and used one of my Drigmy shards. With that done, I finally started working on a seed reprocessor. I put it right next to my garden cloches because it already had power and was connected to an ender chest. Since I had so many seeds, this was going to be such a huge help turning all the seeds back into essences. I messed around more with some other ender chests, but more importantly, I uh, was able to upgrade the reprocessor to Prudentium. Later that night, I was able to get a Tertium upgrade and make a mob yoinker. The reprocessor was working so well, I got it up to Imperium 2, which was super fast. Day 177 to day 178, I reprocessed more of my seeds and then tried to automate this thing, but that wasn't working very well. After that, I placed this mossy cobblestone down right in front of the ethereal glass to summon some Drigmies. Once that was prepared, it was time to grab the piglitch. I went to the other dimension and searched for an ancient pyramid. Then I grabbed this piglitch, which took a bunch of levels and came back. So I ended up making a few mistakes. Number one was not enclosing this farm, and number two was not name tagging the piglitch. Anyways, I summoned the Drigmi and placed some source jars close to it. So this Drigmi is supposed to simulate the drop loot by the piglitch and then place it into the ender chest. Uh, as this was going on, I ended up finding some more Drigmies near the base and I gave them these Wilden Horns to get more shards. Then there were way too many phantoms so I had to sleep. In the morning, I set up the ritual for more of those charms to speed up the process. While doing that, my piglet disappeared. Just in case, I ended up making the trap a little bit better and summoned another Drigmie for help. I then had to grab another piglet, but first I hopped in the mining dimension real quick to see the Silk Touch loot and uh, also set the quarry down to bedrock. This time, I tried to pick up a piglet and ended up not having enough XP for it. So I had to do it the old fashioned way. I took out a piglet and one of them dropped three hearts, so I was super optimistic. I broke through the pyramid, tearing through the mobs and made it to the second floor, which was packed. Luckily, I was able to spam attacks and break spawners, which made everything a lot easier. Then I became the luckiest person in the world when a piglet exploded into a loop pinata. From this one guy, I got about 66 hearts. Once that was done, I destroyed this place, basically killing everything I could and breaking as many things as I possibly could as well. I took a break to put some items away and then went back for round two. Eventually, I made it to the top floor where I broke the spawners, grabbed the netherite blocks and looted those stacked chests in the center. They 179, I could start the process of making all the modium alloys now. This, however, needed a billion FE. That ended up being way too much of a burden on the spirited reactor. I actually had to stop the process for now. After processing most of my seeds, I used one of the nether stars I had to energize some nitro crystals. This process gave me 16 crystals each time, which is really nice. Once that was used up, I made patterns for uh, base upgrades and uh, speed upgrades. The next morning, I cleared that piglet farm area and went into the mining dimension to collect the loot plus grab some all the modium ores. I had to run those evaporation plants again and started uh, putting a bunch of ores through the process. I also ran the lithium dust maker too, but this time I connected it to an ender chest. Some of these silk touch ores couldn't be processed so I had to mine them manually. The builder also picked up blocks of ores too and that had to be cooked manually. On top of that, I ended up running out of HCL since there was no sun. I also learned the next morning that you could just energize raw uraninite, which gave a much better return. Doing that gave me like 9 stacks of those things. Once all of that was finished, I looked to see how many more materials I would need for a storage upgrade. Turns out I would need a lot more silicon, so I reprocessed those seeds. Then for glass, I tore through a desert again. After all of that, I put a recipe for glass in the furnace as well. Still, I ended up needing a little bit more redstone and glass. I ended up getting the redstone underground, and I also had a ton of regular sand. Just to make sure I had enough silicon, I went to the nether to grab tons of quartz. Then finally, I could actually start the auto craft. Things were running a little slow, but at least it was all automatic. After all of that, I had three 1024k storage parts. I also decided to just stick with the fortune quarry instead, and this new quarry was six chunks big. Once morning came, I made a four million storage part and had to run my old disc through the manipulator. Next up, I started working on a creative importer, and this thing was pretty expensive. It needed a nether star. During that, I also got my one million storage back. 
Plus, I got four Insanium Essences, which meant I could now make the Nether Star Crux. I only need one more Nether Star, which I got pretty easily by obliterating this Wither. I used this Crux in the last Garden Cloche I had. Day 184 to day 185, I had to swap the Dragon Egg Seeds into the Cloche and brought the Nether Star Seeds out. This was because the actual farm ran way faster. Once that was done, I did a ritual for quartz seeds and planted that as well. After that, I made these uh, tertium growth accelerators, but I'm pretty sure these aren't really worth it. I also grabbed more items from the quarry and ran them through the process. Since the mod pack had been updated, there was also an XP augment for the furnace, but I had no idea how it worked. While all that was going on, I grabbed some wither skeleton skulls and went to the nether for a few items, soul sand and hopefully a blaze spawner. I could only get the soul sand, but at least now I could fight a bunch of withers. I took out three and came home to make more nitro crystals. I needed like 36 of those nitro capacitors. Later that night, I didn't realize that stacking inferium growth accelerators would be more efficient, uh, so I actually ended up filling out that uh, tertium layer. Day 186, I just messed around with the machines and waited for my crops to grow. I especially needed the nether star essences to grow. Uh, that night, the quarry had finished and I ended up grabbing all the stuffs to smelt. Day 187, after waiting for most of the things to process, I ended up replacing a layer of the inferium growth accelerators with prudentium. Now once again, I'm not really really sure how efficient this thing is, but it did end up costing a lot of essences. Rest of the night, I waited for more items to finish up. Day 188, from all of that waiting, I finally had enough of those nether star essences to make a few nether stars. With all of that done, I made tons of tinted glass and grabbed a few more amethyst shards. Then I came back to make more nitro crystals with these two new nether stars. Once that was done, I built an everbright portal right next to the nether portal. I lit it up and spawned in the middle of an ocean. I also got some quest rewards as well. To help with the bosses, I ended up chopping down some trees to make some pickaxes and then started going underground for some cool materials. I actually wanted these uh, aqui tools to fight the bosses with. It took a little bit, but I got four raw aqui, which I cooked up. With that, I made an aquite sword and I uh, came back home to enchant this thing. One of the enchants actually looked pretty sick, so I stuck with that. It was then time to fight some bosses. I hopped back in and looked for the blinding dungeon. I made my way inside, grabbed all the keys and noticed that this sword was like one-shotting these mobs. After that, I grabbed my quest reward and went into the boss fight. This was the summoner and I actually hated both of the dimensions like first bosses. But with this sword, I was able to wipe this dude out really quickly. I opened the loot bag and got some really cool items. The arc was definitely the most important thing. Next up was a Scarlet Crusher in a nature dungeon. The second bosses are way better, but they're like super annoying to get to. Before I went into that gigantic structure, I set a waypoint up and then I came home to put an affix on this sword. I even put like a crit chance gem on it too. Since I was fully prepared, I hopped into the dungeon, I turned the hover mode on and and started looking through each one of these rooms. This ended up taking so long. Well, eventually I got the four keys and found the staircase leading up to the boss room. I went inside and I also had gotten this axe from one of the chests, which uh, actually helped like crazy. I thought that my sword was broken because of the affix, but I'm pretty sure this mod just wants you to use axes on this guy. Because I was worried, I actually made a new axe and a sword. The fight itself was actually pretty easy. I just broke the barriers and waited for the crusher to attack. Once it stopped, I would hit it for major damage. Halfway through, this thing gets out of the center and starts chasing you. In this situation, I was able to do tons of damage with my crit chance. I took a few more hits, but now this boss was fully done. Once again, the arc was the best reward. I then came home, got rid of the Everbright portal and built one for the Ever Dawn. This time, I just speed ran the boss in here. I grabbed all the keys and spam attacked the alchemist. This fight only took a few seconds and I got the loot bag. This arc though was not as good, but I did get a cool shield. The next structure was the poison dungeon and this one was by far the most annoying. Anyway, I managed to get the four keys and I made it all the way down to the bottom and of course I went into the boss chamber. This was the Arachnark. Almost immediately I was able to take tons of its health down. Once it started hanging on the walls I had to hit it with my bow and that barely did any damage. The rest of the fight was super easy though. I got my final loot bag with another arc and I completed most of the dimensions quests. All those mobs gave me tons of yellow hearts and I wanted to fill out those heart containers. For now, I could only fill out the red and yellow hearts. This gave me like a whole new color of hearts I've never seen before. Also, I had tons of nether star essences, so I made even more nitro crystals. The next morning, I set up an area to house a bunch of spawners. The floors were made out of stone bricks, the corners were made out of quartz pillars, and I used tinted glass to cover the rest. 
dust. I then set up the vector plates and the mob masher. Once that was done, I made tons of fans that would uh, hopefully push the mobs down. I ended up placing them on the top of this entire structure. That's when I fully ran out of amethyst crystals. Before worrying about that though, I set up a column of spawners. Day 192, to get more amethyst shards, I learned that you could use these amethyst blocks on a cutting board. Doing that, I was able to fill out the sides some more. I also put these comparators into the spawners as well to make them redstone controlled. Then I filled out more of the sides and I made these brass casings so that I could craft these things called redstone links. I put the links on the side of the spawners and then another one on the outside to control the whole thing. It took a bit to set up right, but uh, it was working. To finalize it, I filled out the front wall and put some tinted ethereal glass as well so that I could go back and forth. Now I just needed spawn eggs to get the mobs I needed. I hopped into the other dimension and luckily there was a vindicator there. I got its DNA and uh, also some blazing wither skeleton DNA as well. Day 193, using those swabs with those mobs DNAs, I could make chicken feed. I ended up finding two chickens right next to me and uh, this helped me get two spawn eggs, but I had to explore some more to grab the last one. Once that was finished, I came back home to place a redstone block underneath the mob masher and then put upgrades into it. After that, I changed all those spawners with the eggs I had. I actually wanted one more spawner, so I found the nearest roguelike dungeon to explore. I boxed the spawner up, brought it home, and also linked that one up too. With that being done, I put tons of sugar into each spawner, reducing the minimum spawn delay. Then I used these clocks to reduce the max spawn delay. After that, I set up the collection system with an absorption hopper. For the XP, I needed some lime green dye and black concrete. Day 194, I now had a netherite chest for the items and an experience crystal for the XP. Then I ran the spawners and the mobs started flowing through. The amount of items I got from that quick run were amazing. I no longer needed blaze seeds or emerald seeds anymore. The next thing I needed to do was get all of the good loot into my storage system. I basically just did that with an item pipe uh, that contained a netherite upgrade going into an ender chest. This way I could whitelist the items I wanted into the system. I basically just whitelisted everything other than the random armor and weapons. But now that meant I'd have to upgrade to a creative importer. I also no longer needed an ender chest going into the drawer. I could just connect the whole thing to the system. The only issue is that my uh, mob farm ender chest wasn't depositing anything. Luckily, I had tons of green dye and once I got every single one of these uh, to be the same color, it all was operational. Day 195, I set up a 2x2 drawer for some of the mob drops and then made a trash can to get rid of a bunch of the junk in the chest. Uh, after that, I ran the spawner again and got so many items. To help with the overflowing, I actually put an advanced void upgrade in the chest, but honestly, I had no clue how this thing worked. I even set up a blacklist, uh, then I had it match tags and on top of that I also ran the spawner until this whole thing filled up but for some reason I just couldn't get this thing to void any items so I was just gonna have to do it manually emptying out things to the trash can. During the night I had another nether star which I turned into a nitro crystal. I also took out one more wither to finally get the last bit of stuff I needed for a nitro reactor. I set this beast up right away and it was working like a dream. Day 196 to day 197 I was messing around with the mob farm a little bit and I had to uh, restructure a few things but after that I made a small pool of water to activate the portal to the twilight dimension. This ended up unlocking all of the quests for the dimension as well. I then decided to speed run these quests as quickly as possible. First up, I grabbed some uh, brown mushrooms while I was in there. Then I set up a waystone. Once that was done, I started looking for a courtyard. I ended up finding a mini maze and here I grabbed some spawners plus some of the loot in the chests. Then I used this compass to locate the first structure. This boss was the Naga and I took it out with like five shots from my bow. I picked up the trophy and that completed the first quest. Next up was the Lich and this dude is in a tower. Since this place also had a bunch of books, I decided to work from the bottom all the way to the top just to grab all the loot. Up top was the Lich who takes damage when you reflect the projectile back. The second phase was pretty unique and it spawns minions so I had to make sure to take those guys out too. Honestly this fight was super easy and I picked up my second trophy. The third boss was a minnow shroom in a swamp. In order to advance this quest I needed to take out some minotaurs to make a map. I was slowly working my way through the structure looking for this thing called a maze map focus. Once I got the map I decided to swap to another weapon so that I could pick up uh, raw meat. Finally I advanced the quest and found the minnow shroom room. 
This fight literally took like two or three hits. Inside of the chests, I got the trophy and some beef stroganoff, which allowed me to fight the Hydra now. This one was by far the coolest looking boss. And once again, this was about like launching the projectiles back. The only difference is I had to use my bow this time and I fired it at the heads as the Hydra attacked. Doing that, I was able to take him out pretty easily. Also, their lair had tons of ores, so I grabbed a bunch of that before I took the trophies. The next boss is by far the most annoying. They were called Night Phantoms and their structures were huge, but sometimes it could also just not spawn the lair. I ran through this structure and even decided to start breaking a bunch of it down for more visibility, but nothing. I ended up having to find another one of these structures to fight the bosses. These guys were super easy and dropped some cool looking armor. Once I got the trophy, the next boss was the Urgast. Now this guy spawns in a very cool looking tower and it's actually a very unique boss. I quickly fired an arrow, taking down a quarter of its health, and then I ran into the little side room where I had to take down these mini gas to power a machine. Once I stood on this pressure plate, it dragged the Urgast closer to me and I could take it out. After that, I grabbed all the loot inside that chest and started taking out a bunch of gas because uh, gas tears can be used on spawners. I used my bow since it was magnetic and then went out to find the Yeti cave. Immediately, I flew into the center and decimated this alpha Yeti. Then I grabbed the trophy and went looking for an Aurora Palace for the Snow Queen. For this one, I actually stayed really close to the towers to see if I could get the boss bar to pop up. That ended up working pretty well so I knew exactly where to break into. Since I could fly, I just attacked the Snow Queen easily and the fight was over in a few seconds. The chests, of course, had the trophy but it also had a really nice bow. The next next few aren't really boss battles, so I used a nature's compass to look for a twilight highlands biome. Once I got there, I found a crater and started digging down. I ended up seeing a gigantic obsidian box so I knew I was in the right place. Then to finish some quests, I went around the cave and I found a smaller obsidian box. There was a chest in here that had magic beans. After that, I made my way back to the surface and here I planted the seeds underneath the clouds. That ended up causing huge beanstalks to rise from the ground. I decided to fly up instead and fight these giants that look like me. They dropped a giant sword and a pickaxe. With that, I went back to the cave to break open the giant obsidian box. It took a bit to mine, but inside I opened a chest that gave me the lamp of cinders. With this, I could burn these thorns. Then to complete the last few quests, I needed to grab like 12 of these thorn roses. This process was actually super annoying, but I got it done. With all that finished, I went to the final castle, which was actually a work in progress, and just took the doors. Uh, turns out that was actually part of the quests too. For the last few days, I energized these all the modium alloys. Uh, it actually took a really good amount of time. I finally had one of these ingots now though. While energizing another, I set up the apparatus to combine all of them for the alloy tools. Also while waiting, I let the mob grinder run for a bit and then I realized I had tons of brown mushrooms from the twilight forest. So with that, I made a bunch of fermented spider eyes and supercharged the spawner spawn counts. I also put wool into the spawners to make the mobs silent. And uh, last but not least, I used chorus fruit to get rid of the AI of the mobs. Then I grabbed the levels that had piled up and started placing some of these uh, all the modium alloys into the apparatus. The energizing process was so long, I was able to reprocess a bunch of my seeds and even upgrade the seed reprocessor to Supremium. I ended day 200 by just being a few ingots short of an all the modium alloy tool. If you want 300 days where I build bigger reactors, automate this energizer, and get even closer to the ATM star, let me know in the comments.